Hello and welcome to Mr. Evans's Forest School. Today uh, we are going to look at elder. Now elder is an incredibly important resource for forest school. It's a small tree or shrub um, that grows along hedgerows and um, pathways. It, it sort of doesn't really grow in the woods so much um, but it's definitely on wasteland and other things like that. Um, you may very well know what an elder looks like. Um, at the moment, I don't know if you can see that, we've got um, just coming out into leaf there so that's kind of what it's going to look like at the beginning of February. Some of them may have a few slightly bigger leaves. Um, probably the most distinctive feature of a elder is its sort of freckled bark like that and it's got little raised um, black sort of spots on its bark. Okay so it's also known as the witch's tree um, because it has lots of medicinal purposes so you might know it for its uh, flowers, its yellow flowers that have a distinctive smell or its purple berries um, sort of late summer. Um, but what we're going to do, we'll probably harvest it with some secateurs so you're going to need an adult to do that. Okay, um, You want to get a piece sort of basically as large as you can get with your secateurs. Once it starts getting to this sort of thinness here, um, not really any good. So you want something quite thick. Um, this is pretty suitable, I suppose it's just over a centimetre. Okay, and the thing that makes this interesting for us is, I hope you can see that, in the end you've got a white centre which is very soft and then you've got the wood which goes around it. So what we're going to do is make some beads today by cutting small sections and getting rid of the soft white stuff that's in the middle. Okay, now you may well get away with using your secateurs if that's all you have. Um, I assume most people do have a pair of secateurs, if, certainly if they have a garden. And you're going to snip that, it's flown off. And you have a small bead, okay? Now, what you can do if you don't have a pair of secateurs, but do have this, this is a junior hacksaw. Now, junior hacksaws in most tool kits, really, um, they're used for cutting all different materials. We have them in the woods for cutting um, nice clean cuts of elder, um, but they're useful for lots of things. When you're using a tool, you have to have a gloved hand on what we call the holding hand. So this is the hand I don't write with. This is the hand I do write with. So this is my more skillful hand. It's always gonna be my tool hand. I can't actually cut my tool hand, even if I try. So therefore it doesn't need protection and your hand's gonna give a much, much better grip like this. Okay, we have things called tool slip. If I put that in there, it doesn't feel quite so strong, okay? So the tool always goes in here, no matter what tool we're using, and the gloved hand's always here. We often have issues with people not realizing what hand they write with, so it's good actually to get used to this and just slip in your, your holding hand glove on. We're gonna usually cut over the edge of a table Okay, apologies for all this noise, but the building site's very busy this morning, if you can hear all that. We're going to put the elder over the edge of the table. Now, as I'm working on a table, I've just put this block of wood here to raise it up, just to show you, okay? You're just going to use your holding hand, you're going to lock it tight, really tight, because if this moves, it's going to be very hard to saw, okay? And these are the principles for all sawing wood, okay? So it's really good to learn these now. Okay, so lock that tight. Come in here, pick the size of the bead that you want and cut a nice straight line. Now when you're cutting, the only thing you need to do when you're using a saw is keep it in a straight line, okay? It's got to be going straight through the cut. Your arm's going to be pulling back in a straight line. As soon as you start going sideways and it happens when you force it and you're trying to move it. Okay, you want to keep it nice and straight. If you do that with all saws through all wood, pretty much you're going to get through it, okay? So you have this lovely bead, just as you had with the secateurs. Much rather you actually use the junior hacksaw in a glove. I mean, it doesn't have to be a child's glove, it could be an adult's glove. It's just got to protect your hands, really. So if you've got anything lying about and a junior hacksaw, you should be able to do this, okay? Much rather you did that because that's much more of a skill to learn. The secateurs, well, yeah, that's just getting away with it, okay? But it would be really cool if you could learn to use the junior hacksaw and make your nice little beads like this, okay? Now, at school, or in the woods, we would keep our glove on and we would use one of these and this is called a palm drill. Okay, really useful tool for lots of things. The only reason we use it, it's about the right size. You can put it here. I don't mind people doing this sort of in mid-air if you like, holding it with finger and thumb 
and just twisting slowly and what happens is quite quickly you go through okay and then I just pull it backwards and forwards a few times and you end up with a lovely tubular hole in that okay um, if you don't have a palm drill at home and chances are you probably you probably don't um, we can use a sharp stick now if you just snap a, a stick quite often they end up with a, with a sharp end but I'm using um, just for the sake of it a, a barbecue skewer it's got a flat end and a sharp end and I'm just gonna basically pick this out that bit's quite fun don't need my glove really for this because there's not really that much can go wrong okay so I'm just gonna pick start picking that out if you can see that I could also use the flat end just literally push it through because it's so soft once you first cut it all oh, this is very wet and juicy and it's uh, no problem at all so there you go so there's a bee basically and you can make your necklace or bracelet with that um, but what we like to do I'm just going to cut that to get it out of the way what we also like to do is to peel this bark okay at school we use a peeler um, this tool so you recognize that but I'd really rather you didn't maybe use that one at home at the moment um, with mummies and daddies because potentially that actually can cause injuries um, you know worse than you think believe it or not so any kind of blunt metal edge will just get rid of this in fact if I just use my nail you can see that the bark starting to come off but I'm going to use just because it's handy well no I use the scissors actually there you go so no, not the blade of the scissors just the edge of the scissors so all blunt nice and safe and what you're trying to do just go I'm pressing down slightly and I'm just going backwards and forwards and to be honest it's quite a pleasant activity and lots of children Lots of children just like doing this part and they can do loads of it, you know, there's no right or wrong, you do whatever you feel is right at the time. Okay. When we make pencils with this, we keep this bit as bark and we do a sort of a pencil kind of shape end at each end, maybe if you're doing two ends, just so it looks a bit like a pencil. Um, for the beads, I don't know if you can see that, but what we've ended up with is a lovely sort of um, white kind of shiny wood. Now you're just going to treat that in the same way as the other, so I'm putting my glove back on, getting the saw, still very strong because the bark really is just like a paper, okay, a bit silly there, that might happen if you stop towards the end, so you've got a little bit sticking out, so get your hacksaw back, just get rid of that, okay, and now you've got a different kind of bead I suppose, um, the reason I've done this is because if you're at home, I would recommend that you go and cut your elder, make loads of these beads, clear them out, take them indoors and maybe dry them for a few minutes, well, a few hours if you can on a sunlit windowsill. I wouldn't do it over a, something super hot like a radiator, but just something just so it kind of gets rid of the sort of slimy, sliminess on it. I mean, this is already pretty dry. If you wipe it, it's getting there. But just dry it out for as long as you can, be patient for, and then take it in and paint them. And you can come up with some incredible necklaces. Obviously, you know, you can have sort of 20 beads, all different colors. Um, you can have bracelets again. So they're gonna obviously go around here. I'll just quickly show you, it's pretty self-explanatory this bit, but you're going to take some string, take your bead, not that one, that one hasn't been drilled, and go through the hole and come out the other side. Next one. Okay, now you can use wool or something like this for this exercise. The only thing I'd say is wool's a bit sort of easy to break. And what happens is people spend ages making it and then they do it with one strand of wool, someone pulls it, it gets caught and it snaps and all the beads end up on the floor. This is super strong, well, very strong string. I'm not gonna break that by hand, that's ideal really. If you insist on using wool because anything you've got, all I'd do is I'd sort of at least double it up. So have two strands of wool. Um, and that becomes stronger, have three even stronger. You can even sort of twist it together. But anyhow, your string's your string, whatever you've got, you're going to put some beads on it. Um, if you should get stuck with any bead, and I haven't yet, but let's just assume, I'm gonna just say I get stuck with this one, I'm going to 
just grab my stick try and get pick up some of the string and if you see that it's pu pulled it through the other side so I could, I'll pull the string first before I pull the bit of wood out otherwise you might lose it and then just get rid of the, the string the, the stick sorry and there you go okay obviously I haven't painted these and I've only got four on to show you but you are going to take the two ends like this I would get someone else to do this so you're going to drape that round your neck or your arm and get it to the right tension if you're right the right tightness get the other person just to put a loop here that's all I've done just putting a loop and putting the two ends through so it's just a simple knot but of course that means it can't come undone and there you go so good luck with that and have fun